Ah, I feel like I'm going for a job interview. Yeah. <laughs> I hope I get it. <laughs> so where do you see yourself in four years? <laughs> where you're sitting, sir. <laughs> Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. And once again, he's back. It's Mark from Long Island. I'm gonna shake your hand. All right, hey, <laughs> you did moisturize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, should I give some backstory to that comment? You can if you want. You can if you want. <laughs> no. One second. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Very nice. Right. So, uh, as you can see, Mark is back, and today we're gonna discuss luxury versus affordable watches. Is it really worth it or a waste of money, right? Yeah. So how this typically works, I send Mark a bunch of concepts. He sends me. I kind of we kind of put something together, and you tend to pick. Oh, let's do this one. Yeah. You know, whichever interests Mark the most. Whatever topics. Um, so I've brought, I, I've scribbled down some questions. Oh. Um, which I'd like to get your perspective on. Sure. Um, but first of all, yeah, wristwatch check, obviously. Oh, am I first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so for affordable versus luxury, I figured I'd do the total dichotomy of affordable and luxury. So I have my Islander, nice, rhodium dial, nice, kind of like a date just sarbish watch, and then my Daytona white gold blue dial, um, which I guess could probably could be considered luxury. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So I'm wearing. Actually, I just realized I'm, I'm doing the Buzz Aldrin. I got affordable on one side. What the hell are you doing there? <laughs> and then the Subby. This is like you with the two mugs. Yeah. <laughs> this is so I can add an alarm, stopwatch. Uh, I have a different time zone. This makes any. You now, now you have a GMT. Now I have a GMT. Now I have the all T this. stands for TGV. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I have all the uh, that functionality. Is, uh, you never cease to, um, yeah, amaze me. I was kind of inspired by by you because right. I, I, I the short scoff would do that. So yeah, one on pentagon yeah, time. Yeah, one on cater uh, time. Or whatever, yeah. yeah, but then I was like, how can I do that on one one watch? On one watch, yeah. And also, it's discreet. No, you don't. Really no, I didn't know. Why didn't even. Yeah, I didn't even know until you did one of these. Yeah, and this is the Casio F91W. It's so thin; it's, it feels like a class. Right. It doesn't. And if you bash it, you it's don't ten dollars. Right. Get another one. Get another one. Yeah. Okay. Right. That might be in so own you, video. You're doing the short scuff. This is the Buzz Aldrin. All right. So Buzz Aldrin did that. Yeah, he he I, he didn't do it when he was up there, but he he uh, <laughs> sounded like yeah. he's passed away. Well, at the time of this video, he hasn't passed away. What I mean is, when he was on the moon, um, he, I didn't see him doing that. But I, recently, in a, advertising and interviews, he's wearing two Amigas on one, two Speedmasters on one strap. Two Speedmasters yeah. on one strap. Yeah, and like then another one. One digital and like an X33 and a regular, or I, it was... The one on top is, is definitely like one manual of, wine, Right, one of his old ones, yeah. The one underneath, I don't know what it is, if anybody knows. And then he wears another watch on the other side. So he's tripling it. He's tri <laughs> so I got to I got up my game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, enough. Oh my god. Okay. Right. First question. Oh. Hello. What makes or defines a watch as luxury? You know, so I feel like you could take that same question and say what makes or defines a watch as affordable. Um, because I consider Ooh, myself to be clever, in the right? king of affordable the affordable watch world and people say right. what's what's an affordable watch well you know it varies for everybody so i feel like luxury is something that would vary from person to person yeah you know someone that you know doesn't have a lot of money maybe a thousand dollar watch to them is a luxury mm -hmm. uh, maybe someone that has a ton of money a thousand dollar watch is not a luxury maybe mm -hmm. for them it is affordable um but i would say mostly that 
I would consider luxury to be more defined by price than by feature set. Mm -hmm. um, generally, um, not not artificially raised prices, but I feel like if it's representing a larger portion of your uh, finances, mm -hmm. then I would consider that more of a luxury purchase for that person. Interesting. Does that make sense? Interesting. It's funny because when I was thinking of what to ask you, I'd written. Uh, well, first of all, I'd written defined by price, which you've kind of gone into. Yeah. Then I went and you wrote things like level of craftsmanship, exclusivity, right. sure. rarity. Well, generally, materials. so for most people, um, once you get into the, once you talk about price and it's expensive and that was a luxury, everything else kind of falls into place. Right. Exclusivity, yeah. Not everybody's walking around with a $100,000 watch on their wrist. So you are exclusive. Not People are not going to pay $100,000 for a watch if it's built like a, piece of garbage right so there goes your craftsmanship right. and you know maybe except hublot hublot yeah. <laughs> <laughs> had to throw that in um nice. but yeah so i kind of feel like the price just gets you everything else that you're really that you wanted to look for in what luxury actually means right 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 that? no perfect um so, and another aspect i wanted to ask you it, well, well actually just sure. going back on that sure. uh, is there one thing that you think defines a luxury uh, watch as luxury more than anything else like would you say it's craftsmanship is is m most most important to you or 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 price or i think price is king price is king. i think price is king i just really i mean if justin bieber buys a fifty thousand dollar rolex is that a luxury purchase for him no. right no it's not it's just i just bought a watch i d i really feel like we might look at that and say, well, that was a luxury purchase. Mm. Yeah, sure. And we can, we can say, oh, well, it's, you know, if he drives a $200,000 Ferrari, mm. is it a luxury purchase? Well, for me it is, sure. Mm. Mm. But for him, it's not. To him, it's just, he's just living life. Interesting. Um, so that's, that's my perspective. I feel like everyone has, can have their own definition of mm. what luxury uh, And be. one could say the opposite of that is owning a second watch, even if it's a That can Casio, be a luxury. Is a luxury. Absolute luxury to some people, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Interesting. And uh, now another aspect of this is when you, from affordable watches to luxury, there seems to be, and I've noticed this very much in in the watch community and and with watch enthusiasts, this perception of climbing the tiers. Like you okay. start with an SKX, then yep. you get the Squale 1521. Sure. Then you get your first Omega Speedmaster. There's definitely an element of truth right. because everybody climbs at some level, right? Correct. Um, but is it worth? Is it really worth the upgrade? Well, I usually tell people right that if you start at the top, you can't appreciate what was available down below for lower prices. So, like, if you start with, a, you know, a Seamaster or a Speedmaster mm. for a couple of grand, and then when you if you strap on perhaps an SKX if you could find one or an Orion or something else, you. You won't appreciate it for what it is. Whereas if you start at the bottom and you see, wow, look, look what I got for 200 bucks. Mm -hmm. And you have that for a few years. And oh, wow, look what I got for 500 bucks. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's more of, a, more of an appreciation for what you're getting um, for the product on price if you, work, if you work your way up. And I think it's a natural progression for most people. Mm -hmm. There are people that jump right in and they're, you know, one and done, Submariner, I'm finished. Done, yeah. But then that's not but a that, true that's watch not a true, person. Yeah, that's yeah. not, we're not talking about that person. Mm -hmm. I feel you kind of have to work your way, earn your wings, so to speak. I agree. And you know what makes me sad sometimes is when I see um, celebrities or their kids, right, on yeah. Instagram or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's such and such actor or such and such musician's son mm -hmm. or daughter, and they're like twelve, right. and they have a, a <laughs> yeah. Daytona, mm -hmm. and I, like people can just do whatever they want. Right? It's your money, do it's what you your want money, to do. Your money, absolutely fine. But a part of me is like they're never gonna value the um, that moment. Oh, if, maybe they might ha have that. Oh, for Christmas I got a Daytona, right? right. But but like I remember getting my first luxury what I consider luxury, it was a Seamaster in my in my late 20s. Okay. Or mid 20s, I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I worked my butt off for that. I think I appreciated you it. You appreciate more. it more. Yeah. Sure. No, and I think that, like I said, you got it. 
if you just jump in at the top of the at, at the top of the ladder, mm. you don't know what the rest the rest of it was like going up. And I just think that, like you said, it's an appreciation for it, especially if it's mm. your own money and you work hard for it. Yeah. And not that people, famous people, don't work hard for their money. I'm sure, they work, mm. but to them, it's you know, I, I I don't know how many people with collection like that that are like that are real watch collectors. I mean, there's a few. I think most of them it's just for the show and just to be part of. I guess the club, as it were. Right. Yeah. I'm definitely not into that. Uh, no. <laughs> I I have to say though, and I see this on Facebook, and I see this actually on Instagram as well, when people put these pyramids and they put the brands all on tiers and stuff, and I I don't know about you, but I I don't I'm not into that. No. No. I, pi no pigeonholing. Yeah. Right. Look, if you if you like the long jeans and you like this and a Rolex, this, that and the other, whatever. Yes, one is more uh, finely made and sure. more expensive and rarer and blah, 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 but doesn't mean it's necessarily better. It's very, because we can all argue and say that, you know, we don't even need watches to begin with. Your F91 there is, if you want to watch, that keeps yeah. time better than what's on the other side. Exactly. Right, and you know, so we're really all just playing this game of, we're buying jewelry that looks nice and we appreciate what's on the inside. Right. Um, yeah, but there also there's an element of fun because oh, sure. I remember there's um, you you're, you're not going to like this watch, but uh, I, I I just know you I know oh, your oh, style. Okay. It's the Casio DW290, which is the Mission Impossible, uh -huh. which is yeah, really yeah. retro. It's yeah, kind of right. it's not like I, I knew it. I knew it. Yeah. I put it off. You know, I wasn't interested. I I bought it to review it. Right. Uh, see what it's like. I wanted to see what the fuss was. Uh, I saw it on somebody else's wrist, and that kind of actually raised my. Okay. Yeah. yeah your I was interest. like, oh, actually, that's not as bad as I thought. It's a weird-looking watch. Mm -hmm. Then looking at the history, and it's got a lot of. It was worn a lot uh, by a lot of astronauts and all mm -hmm. this kind of stuff. And then, of course, it's cinematic fame. Right. I I love that piece. All I right. I sometimes I wear it, and I'm just like I I keep thinking, what's the point of Anything What's else? Anything else more this expensive? This watch does everything. Yeah. It's forty dollars. Yeah, you know, and I, it's so much fun. And I, it, the, the fact that it costs less, has actually kind of does that makes it, it makes, makes it, it even, even more, more like yeah. like wow. I if you get joy out of wearing it, obviously, you know, you wear it. Um, joy can be found in, like I said, in luxury or affordable. I think yeah. everyone gets the same, you know happiness of out of wearing a watch it doesn't yeah. necessarily have to be it's expensive. not price related no i mean people get expensive things i think to either impress themselves or impress their friends mm. unfortunately so we've we've established really there is not a link between enjoyment and price you you just establish it completely oh, okay. completely <laughs> easily no i'm just saying but no i think that that's definitely true i mean I, obviously i wear watches that are at extreme bottom end of the spectrum and I wear watches that you know at the top end of my spectrum right I can get the same joy out of wearing both is there is there a time where the kind of tier system is helpful I would say that yeah I would say for for the novice and the beginner I think that's where the tier system is helpful I think right. that I think everyone needs to jump in you should jump in near the bottom Right. I, I just, I, I, that's just my opinion. If you want to jump in with a $10, you know, quartz or a Timex or whatever, mm -hmm. I think that's the way. I mean, I think that's the way. But yeah, I don't like it when people poo poo on other watches. Um, mm -hmm. I just, you know, if you don't like it, yeah. whatever, just keep your comments to yourself for yeah. the most part, except for Hublot. blow. Yeah. No, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to get your opinion on um, luxury watches in comparison to other luxury products because I noticed something. Sure. Uh, I'm a big fan of, of like leather goods. I, co I collect, okay. I, um, Carl Friedrich is like my go-to brand, right? I have their bags and I've reviewed several. I love them. But what they do, which is kind of interesting and it proves a point where watches differ, is that um, with them, the more you pay, mm -hmm. it, it tends, uh, I'm, not, I'm not talking about like designer brands where you're paying for the name. Yeah, go ahead. For the status. Okay. With them, you're paying for the craftsmanship. And okay. the more you spend, the, the higher the quality. The better it gets. The better it gets. Sure. It's going to last a lifetime, blah, blah, blah. All of this stuff, right? Uh, because of the quality, the stitching. And yeah, the, yeah. The, 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 sure. The, you know, all this stuff. Yeah. Handmade in Tuscany, all, yep. all this stuff, right? With watches, it's almost the complete opposite because... Yeah. The more expensive they get, in many instances... Unless it's related to precious metals, but the more expensive they get, 
the more they're going to be to service, like a car. Right. And right. every watch is going to need service.、Um, right. If you have a Patek Perpetual Calendar and it needs service in ten or twenty years,、yeah. that service is going to be really expensive.、Um, just because it was really expensive doesn't mean it was doesn't and, doesn't, and again it doesn't mean it's built poorly. It、right. just it really needs it. Whereas an article of clothing or a pair of shoes or you know it's something else, it's kind of disposable. It's, it's out. different. Yeah, yeah, you expect it to wear. Right. Um, but even like you said, like with your leather goods, if you're, you know, in 20 years, it's gonna be nice and soft and broken、yeah. in, and it's、the、got、patina. history to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It works just fine. You wouldn't ask someone to go, you know, fix this up for me. At the, maybe, maybe the snap doesn't close. That's it. But other than that,、yeah. it's good to go.、And、yeah. I think watches are. Yeah, it's a good point that the more expensive you get, the more complicated you usually get it on the inside. Right. right which right. means the more expensive it's gonna be to maintain when that time comes. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. I always say to people, well, you know, learn these things. If you can afford the Ferrari, you can afford the oil change. Excellent point. It's usually, you know, it's true in actually almost anything. Yeah. You know, if you don't complain about it, don't complain if you live on Dune Road in the Hamptons and your house gets washed out every year. You can afford to build the house. You can afford to build another one. Right. <laughs> Right. Okay. Okay. Perfect.、Um, I wanted to ask you also.、Uh, with other luxury products,、um, it sometimes can be a false economy because you're paying for branding. Like, oh yeah, big time. I, I don't know anything about Gucci, right?、Um, it's not my style. It's not my taste, right?、Mm-hmm. But、um, I assure you that there is there is other brands that are made just as to that level. Sure. That, that are hot, you know a quarter of the price. It's just because it's the it's just the name. The, Absolutely. Is there any time it, with watches that Is a false economy in the same kind of way? I said it. I, I feel like Hublot is a brand that the watches are more expensive than they probably should be, simply because it is a Hublot. But that also gives the brand an air of superiority. Is that the right word? Or let's just put it frankly, it keeps out the riffraff. And the other people that will be owning one might be of your same social status、mm. um, because the other people can't afford it and they won't wear it.、Um, that would be one brand that I guess comes to mind quickly.、Um, you know, people say Rolex is unnecessarily expensive.、Mm. I don't necessarily agree with that statement. They're pricey,、um, but they're vertically integrated, and that's an extremely, extremely expensive thing.、Mm. Um, you know, they make their own gold.、Um, I think the only thing they don't do still is make their own hands and crystals.、Um, but, oh, interesting.、Um, they're doing. They're making dials. As we've discussed, they smelt their own gold. You know, they have their own foundries. To do all that stuff is so expensive to bring it in house. Right.、Um, so I feel like. But that's a brand with that crown. That crown brings in a lot of money. If、yeah. you a, if you want to own a store and you want to bring that crown in, they they demand a pretty penny to, for the crown license. Right.、Uh, can I ask you?、Um, do do you prefer your more lu- luxury watches? I wear them. I probably wear Islanders the most. Right.、Uh, fortunately, unfortunately, because. I'm most well, there's proud an element of, of pride. Yeah, I'm most proud. I'm most proud of that. I guess.、Right. I mean, I wear my Blue Squale a whole ton. That's a thousand dollar watch. It's、yeah. nowhere near the priciest watch in my collection. I love wearing watches, and I don't think price always comes into consideration. Sometimes、right. there's just watches that I want for a certain feature.、Um, sometimes it's a it's a mental thing. Like I, I want to complete a collection of a certain few watches.、But、other than that, right? You know, in the in the in the watch drawer of life that I have. I, I pick and poke as I want. The watch drawer of life. I love that. <laughs> Very nice.、It's、like、um, a box of chocolate. You never know what you're gonna get. <laughs> so, what was your first luxury watch? Again, we have to. Do, we're gonna define luxury as, like, like, like I said, price and where you are in life. Your definition. Yeah, I would say then it would probably be. Maybe not my Speedmaster. That was pricey. It would be my my Submariner. Yeah, I bought a Submariner in 2006. I don't think I've ever seen it. Oh yeah, it's a pre-ceramic black dial, right? Black dial, date, Cyclops, aluminum insert. The classic, classic.、Yeah. Right before they went ceramic. Yeah,、right. they went ceramic in like 2007. Was it one of the ones that、uh, did have the rehaul, but with? It does not、um, have、aluminium. no. The serial number is buried. You can't see it. It was, and yeah, that was definitely a luxury purchase.、It? Yeah. At times, I've never seen you wear it. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I just. And you know what? I'll be honest with you. Well, first of all, I'll tell you why. For me, it was a luxury purchase because、yeah. it was right before. It was March of 2006. And I'd be a bit vulgar and ask because I just, just how much did this, I pay for yeah, it? Yeah, just with tax, I think it was six grand. And this was 
I bought it from an authorized dealer. I walked into Torno. Brand new. Brand new. Walked Six out with grand. it. Yeah. With tax. Wow. Okay. So it was probably 5200 before tax. Wow. And what are they now? I don't even know. I have God knows. Don't even I've, know. Yeah, it's over 10, I would imagine. That's crazy. Right? Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so for me, though, it was my wife was pregnant with her first son, mm. first child. Um, well, I had two sons, so it was the first son. And uh, I just knew that I wanted to buy myself something nice before I had a kid because I knew that there wouldn't be other purchases yeah. for a long time. I knew I'd be back to buying stuff, yeah. but I knew. And so that is what I, that is what I splurged on. Um, but I don't wear it all the time. And again, this might sound vulgar. Hmm. I feel like everyone has one. No, I don't think that's what I think. I just, that's realistic. Yeah. 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 Right. 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 I yeah. feel like well, okay, I like to wear the different. Person's wearing some. <laughs> I, just I, I, I just feel like it's it's. I like to wear things that are different. Definitely yeah. all the time. A lot of my watches are very different. I don't have many. Uh, you know, uh, as far as what I'm, what I'm looking for, but I don't have many watches that are popular. I, I own a Speedmaster, but that's the only Omega I own. Um, I own the Blue Dollar Yacht Master because I think it's different. And a lot of my watches, like less expensive watches, are just different watches. And mm. I feel like the Rolex, man, everyone's got one. Yeah. I know I, everyone doesn't have one, I, and I don't mean it in that I have sense. to. I have to say, what I love about the Tudor is that I know it's Tudor. Right. Everyone else thinks it's Rolex. It, exactly. And or knockoff. Right. Right. Because <laughs> it's got a digital watch on the back. Oh, the digital watch on the back, yeah. <laughs> And it, it, to me, it's a little bit more unique to me. Yeah, so, I get it. You know, I like things that are you, you under the radar. Under the radar. It's under right. the radar. Under I the love radar. under the radar. Yeah. This is under the radar. So, yeah. <laughs> this is under the radar. Anyone that looks at this thinks it's a stainless steel watch with a blue dial. Oh, right. This is yeah, under yeah. the radar. I love under the radar. You see, I, I'm thinking like a watch enthusiast. I'm looking Can't. at that. And Nobody like, knows what the hell this is. I'm looking at, oh, Daytona. Are yeah. you listening, Arden? Under the radar, oh, that, blue yeah, dial yeah. watch. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Did buying that Submariner new? How did it make you feel in comparison to buying I don't know something, you know, fraction of the price? <sighs> Anticlimactic. Really? <laughs> yeah. I walked out of the mall. I got in the Roosevelt Field Mall in the Torno store. I walked out with the bag, and I went home. Yeah. I just didn't. I was glad I got it. I really wanted it, and I wore the crap out of it in the beginning. Um, but. Yeah, anticlimactic. I would wow. say that going into a store when I was younger and buying uh, an Oris was a more exciting experience for me. Mm. I don't know. I, I was like, oh, I want that. You know, mm. spur of the moment kind of thing. And if I'm on vacation somewhere and, oh, I, I really want that one. You could buy it. That's like, I don't know, that's excitement. And that's yeah. building memories. And you kind of remember, oh, I remember when I got, you know, Absolutely. when I bought this watch. So that to me, you know, I was more excited to buy my wife's, what my wife had two-tone date just with chocolate dial when I was in Vegas like four years ago. Yeah. I was more excited to do that because that was, to me was like a mess. I was like, oh, I was buying her Rolex. I'm you know bring what? it home to her and S that's nice. I had the same experience when I bought my wife her first date just. The act of giving is a lot right. more... Right, uh, receiving and I yeah. was very excited because my parents had matching date justs um, oh, and you know, his and hers yeah. and I was just like, oh my God. I just yeah. felt good about it. I felt better about that. Nice. I have written here, what are your motivations behind buying a watch? And I think I'm, I'm, I should have wrote, written that a little bit differently because it's actually what draws you in, mm -hmm. first of all. Like, yeah. what gets your attraction? So, for me, is it blue? Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I, as I said before, I really like things that are either different, mm. have an interesting way of telling the time, mm -hmm. um, and again, something that not everybody has. That's like one of my big things lately, is I like things that not everybody has, um, whether it be watches or anything else in life. Mm. Um, and like, it per fits in perfect with the Submariner, you know, wear the Submariner much. I feel like everyone's got one. Um, mm. But for me, it would be just different. Mm. Different. I like, I like different things. Would the Submariner had more a greater effect if it was some kind of obscure rare like a red sub or a it, it might yeah something like see like a red like like a like a red is like a perfect example mm. that is everyone looks at that and would think most people would think it's an everyday submariner only the people in the know would be like oh damn mm. that's you know a double red or single red or whatever it might be interesting so yeah i kind of yeah is there any aspects of luxury watches you don't like iced out watches right it's the first thing that comes to mind because right. does that make a watch luxury you know just because you artificially and are we talking aftermarket 
or no even just the even, bling is the thing yeah, yeah just out the of the box you know the leopard dial rolex comes to it mind immediately oh like yeah did on we've your channel. Fam yeah. famously discussed yeah that. i just feel like for me what i just dis i was about to say despise actually yeah i'll say despise <laughs> why not um i don't like the pretense that when it's a certain aspect is advertising okay i'll give you an example i i went to i was invited to a very posh do at carnegie hall you say do do what's a do like a do like a like a, an event Event, okay. A very posh dude, right? right? And, um, you know, uh, celebrities there and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. And it was for a high end. I'm not going to name the brand because it's a, it would be rude of me being invited and then just to right. kind of poo poo, poo, -poo on it. it. Yeah, yeah, sure. Poo poo um, the do. <laughs> poo poo the do, exactly. But there was an air of like, I, you, you couldn't really it's not ta it's not like a tangible is hoity toity yeah and I, the pretense around yeah, this whole you it. know they had a cigar maker and they had a um the sh uh, uh, an award-winning cocktail person you feel blah, like you're gonna make blah. like a faux pas of some sort or something yeah and it's or... just like i i was the only one at the back of the room talking to the watchmaker who'd worked with this very oh. prestigious company for okay. 15 years no one else was talking to him right right and i, I was fascinated by him and Everyone else was just having their pictures taken and right. all this stuff. And it was just like, that's not what the, what this, to me, this is not what right. the brand should. Right. I understand the, the we, clientele. Right. We are in a different realm right. of, you know, it says all the time, there's this, there's common people, there's watch people, and then there's, you know, and there's the other the rich people yeah, at the watchmen. party that don't they're not, care. They don't care about the watches. They don't care about the They just know that it costs X and... Jim next door will look at it and say, "Oh wow, that watch is expensive. That's that is an expensive watch. Yeah. Welcome to the club." I think that's why I never went to <laughs> these events ever again. And I get invites all the time, but it's right. just like I'm not really interested, right? Yeah, you I know. And and don't get me wrong, I I sometimes I do like hoity-toity things like opera, right? That's because I love it. I enjoy it. Yeah, right? but that see, opera is I think hoity toity because it's I keep saying that word uh is because i think that's just the people it attracts but that's yeah. not why you enjoy it you just enjoy the concert portion of it you enjoy the singing and the whatever yeah. else yeah. but it's just that it happens to attract people yeah who have a lot of money absolutely. it's kind of it's kind of odd oh, how splendid absolutely marvelous bravo bravo indeed hmm i say look at all these lovely humans delish it's weird it's a concert yeah, but it is a concert, it's a concert, it's a posh concert for rich people. Yeah, and you at times. <laughs> yeah, and you, yeah. Um, when I can get free tickets, shout out to a very special friend. Yeah, I, you know, I had no idea that going to the opera was so expensive. It is. I did not know my my uncle goes to what is it, Columbus. Uh, up, uh, oh yeah, um, Lincoln Center. Lincoln Center. Yeah, yeah, he goes there, and I, I had no idea. I was like. How much are tickets? Uh, yeah. I'm like, what are you? Is this a box seat? Is this basketball? Yeah. I couldn't believe it. Well, if you, if you, it's a bit like watches actually, in the way that when people endlessly, whenever you review a watch and it's a little bit more expensive and they're like, oh, uh, you could buy this and that and it's not worth it. Right. Well, there's a lot of that went into it, you know. Right. Like, there's the performance, there's the stage, sure. there's the musicians, I get there's it. The, the art director. I just and didn't the know. Blah, 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 blah. You know? I think it would be like a concert ticket. Like, wow, yeah, I had no idea. It's it's crazy, yeah. it is crazy. La Scala in Milan, right? Which okay. is one very prestigious the pizza opera house. by my house, <laughs> is it? Yeah, I'm like, look, La like, Scala. I'm like, oh, he likes the pizza. Oh my yeah, it's god, it's on Colmack Road, it's right off a of Colmack Road. <laughs> I have to, I have to have this pizza. Well, the, the La Scala is a famous opera house in Milan, right? And uh, there's despite the pandemic, there's still like a waiting list like over a year just to just see to get uh, tickets. just to get a ticket that's crazy i'm probably gonna go to my grave never seeing an opera there wow and that really that kind of makes me sad right 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 you know it's and it, it's a bit like waiting for a rolex oh that's a lot of people dying yeah for that one too <laughs> it shouldn't be like that it shouldn't be like that <laughs> like how you segued into that was a fun yeah <laughs> Opera and watches, nice. That would be like the most niche, small little. Oh my goodness! Yes, might... it would be you and like two other people. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, we're totally off on a tangent now. Okay. Um, we're supposed to be. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's end with some recommendations. Oh, what are your picks for good value in luxury watches? Good value in yeah. luxury. I would. I would say Omega. 
is a great. I think they offer a great yeah. value yeah. in. You know, I think. Again, how can I say it without being too? I think Omega is a good luxury watch for the common person,、um, for where they've priced themselves in the market. They definitely know who their market is.、Um, it's not so cheap that anyone can get one, but it's not so expensive that's out of、mm. reach of the common person. Someone can save for a couple of years and get one. I think that that makes them. They position you. Tudor, another great example. I、mm. think.、Uh, Especially a lot of their new releases,、um, I think they're relatively affordable. Again, for most people,、uh, professionals, a few years of saving, blah blah blah, you you would have the money for it.、Um, Long jeans,、mm. Frederic Constant.、Mm. I think all these are just nice watches that evoke、uh, a, a more a more superiority around them than、uh, than their price would beget them.、Mm. Excellent pick. What, I- what would be your pick for you? Well, it's funny. I、uh, now you've said Omega. I have. I I can't think of anything else. I I have got. I've got some recommendations.、Mm-hmm. Um, I just want to add to your point about Omega. You, you you saw that little solid gold, nineteen fifties Omega.、Yeah. I bought that for just under fifteen hundred. It's crazy. Which you know, it's the caliber five hundred, amazing in house. Right. This is before the shaky period. I've、mm-hmm. done a. I've done a whole、yeah. video. I'll, I'll put it there if you guys missed it. Uh, amazing Amiga.、Um, so they used and and also the Metas testing. I, I have to agree. It's like it makes Kosk look、uh, positively dated. You know,、right. it's like what is this new Seamaster now? It's it's just over five. Yeah, I think that's incredible value. Right, all, all the modern materials. Anyway, I was going to say for the Swiss on the used market, Breitling, which you you highlighted、yeah. in a past video of ours. Yeah, sure. But to me, I think it goes to the Germans. Okay, like a, like a Zinn、yes. and a Hanhard, Hanhard, exactly. Tima and、uh, Nomos. Oh yeah, oh Nom, ah、uh, Nomos. That's a yeah. great. Yeah, that's a. I own a Nomos, a tangent, a tangent day with three quarter plate. Yeah, you're really surprised. All these watches, I didn't know you. Well, you, I guess you got to fill those the drawers. The watch chest review. <laughs> the watch chest. Yeah, I, no, I think、that. Nomos actually. That's. Yeah, good pick. Good pick. And I would have liked to add the higher end of Young Hands. Nice. They got some entry level pieces. Yes,、yeah, they do. But the, the higher end, like Chronoscope. Yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. I could say Oris. I think is another one. I think so. I yeah, yeah definitely. I think they're positioned in a, in a good place as well.、Um, even more affordable to a lot of people.、Mm. Yeah. Nice, guys. What do you think? What do you think defines luxury for you?、Uh, what would be your pick for the best value brand、uh, for or for a first luxury watch? Do share that in the comments. Mark, thank you so much、thank、for、you. coming. Oh, another shake. Yeah, thank <laughs> you, sir. Do check out Mark's channel. I will leave a link in the description if you haven't already.、Uh, and I've got to say, massive thank you to、oh. Mark. Thank you for sponsoring the production of this video. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it, found it useful. And as always, we will catch you in the next one. Ciao. Bye. Perfect. I think.、Uh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. You happy with that? Oh yeah. Cool.